Good morning. It is Sunday, March 27th, 2022, and we have, I'm going to go on and say it before I even tell you the title of the lesson, we've got another great lesson before us this morning. The subject of our lesson this morning is lest we forget. The Bible background is Deuteronomy 8. The printed text is Deuteronomy 8, 1 through 11. The devotional reading is 1 Corinthians 9, 19 through 27. The aim for change says, by the end of this lesson, we will understand what humility is in the light of God's commandments, appreciate God's blessings and our need for humility before the Lord, and practice living a life of humility. Now look at this aim for change, y'all. Understand, appreciate, and practice. Now we all know what these words mean. When we talk about understand, we want to make sure that when I, what I'm telling you, you get. And then when we talk about appreciate, you know, some people don't have an attitude of gratitude. So I want you to recognize that you should be grateful. And then when we talk about practice, we know what the word practice, that means do. And one thing about when you say practice and do, that means that you're putting it into action. Anybody want to say anything on this aim for change before we go further into this lesson? Lest we forget. The in focus says, after high school, Jimmy became a licensed barber. To gain experience, he worked at a few shops, but each time it left a negative taste in his spirit. High booth rents, unprofessional management teams, and lack of respect from other barbers made him fed up with the industry. He decided to take a break. Every week, the customers he had gained over the years would hit him up to see when they could come to get a cut. Eventually, he gave in and slowly started back cutting hair. Soon, every weekend, Jimmy was booked up cutting hair in his basement. He fell back in love with cutting hair. Not only was he cutting hair, but also he was able to help his customers and give them advice whenever they needed it. That's what kept his customers coming back. Not many barbershops gave you a fresh cut and advice. Barbering was his ministry, but soon weekends weren't enough to cut all of his customers. Finally, Jimmy decided to open up his own barbershop. He knew he wouldn't be able to open up his shop without the support of his customers, family, and friends. He dedicated his grand opening to everyone who helped him throughout the years. I just want to thank all of you for supporting me throughout the years, Jimmy said. I've wanted to open my own shop since I was a teenager. Because of setbacks, I wasn't able to make it a reality until today. I fell out of love with cutting hair, and if it wasn't for you all supporting me, I wouldn't be here right now. So this is for you all. Whose prayers and support helped you get to the place you are right now? How have you thanked them for everything they've done? Now, that's a good question, y'all. And you know, I, I, I just thought about one of the things that we can think about, y'all, those milestones in life that we've all experienced. Because I think about when um, my, my siblings started to graduate from high school. That was a milestone because of the fact that in order to be able to graduate from high school, you needed provisions going on to get you to that point. And the one thing that I recognize is that we realized that when Maurice graduated from high school, then Michelle graduated from high school, then Melanie graduated from high school, then I graduated from high school. And each one of those points, those were milestones that our parents celebrated because of the fact that they helped us get to that place of being able to graduate. Because y'all know there are some people out there that will tell you, well, I had to drop out of school. But here we are, we got some people that we can be thankful because they understood that we needed our education 
and we appreciated the fact that they made the provisions for that, and we had to put into practice by doing our work and, and passing the test and making the grade so that we could march across that stage. Anybody want to say anything on this in focus before we go further into this lesson? All right. Keep in mind, beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. Deuteronomy 8, 11. New Living Translation says it this way. But that is the time to be careful. Beware that in your plenty you do not forget the Lord your God and disobey his commandments or his commands, regulations, and decrees that I am giving you today. Deuteronomy 8, 11. You ready, Deke? Deuteronomy 8, 1 through 11. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know that what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. The raiment waxed not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell those, these forty years. Thou shalt also consider in thine heart that a man chastened his son, so the Lord thy God chastened thee. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks, of water, of fountains, and depths that spring out of valleys and hills, and a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive, oil, and honey, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness, thou shalt not lack anything in it, a land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. Amen. Thank you, Deek. People, places, and time. The wilderness wandering. When the Israelites left Egypt, there were more than 600,000 men, women, and children in the caravan. There was no way that the meager resources of the Sinai Desert could support a multitude of that number. So the people were completely dependent on God for their survival. God caused a sweet bread called manna to rain down from heaven to sustain them. When the people grew tired of the heavenly bread, God fed them with quail. When the people ran out of water, he miraculously provided them with water. Ever since crossing the Red Sea, the people were quarrelsome and discontented. In spite of all that God had done for them, they would not find it in their hearts to trust him. Whenever adversary, adversity struck, the people would complain rather than pray. God allowed the Israelites many different opportunities to trust him when, he faced, when, when faced with hardship, but each time they failed. Now, ain't that something, y'all? Just in the people, places, and time, and talk about the wilderness wonder. Here you are. You have been brought out. Mm -hmm. You have been led. You have been provided for. You have been fed. When you complained about one meal, he blessed you with a different meal. When you said you was thirsty, he gave you water. And no matter what you said or how you act, he still provided for you. But yet, you still wouldn't trust him. And he said all you needed to do was pray. Background. Deuteronomy is the second telling of God's law to Moses and the children of Israel. 
The people of Israel are about to enter the promised land after wandering in the wilderness for 40 years as a result of their disobedience. A new generation of Israelites is present to hear the law who do not remember being delivered from slavery in Egypt or being called to worship God. Many of the people present do not remember being disobedient to the Lord and committing idolatry when they received the covenant. Yet they have had their own experiences with temptation and sin as well as witnessing God's deliverance and provision. Moses is retelling the law and reminding the Israelites of the covenant to encourage them to keep God's commandments and prepare them to begin their new lives in the promised land with the Lord. If the Israelites humble themselves and follow God's law, they will prosper in the land God is giving them. I want to start right there before I ask this question. Now here we are, we're getting this background, y'all. And here Moses is, because of the fact that we know that they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years as um, those, those generations were leaving the scene, dying out, and he was allowing a new generation to get prepared to go into this promised land. You haven't done anything to earn what you're getting ready to receive. So in an effort to prepare you for your blessing, let me go on and retell what happened so that you won't repeat the wrong thing and mess yourself up. Because you're getting ready to be handed everything on a silver platter. You haven't earned anything. You haven't worked for anything. You haven't done anything, and the only thing that is required of you is to be obedient. So I'm going to tell you what you need to do so that you can stay on point and don't miss out on your blessing because your ancestors didn't do what they were supposed to do. All they wanted to do was complain. We hungry. Okay, here your manna. We tired of manna. We want something else. Okay, here quail. We thirsty. Okay, here you some water. But in spite of all that he did for them, all that they, he provided for them, all they had to do was pray. And they failed that task. Anybody want to say anything before I ask this question? Yeah. The question says, how can we pass down lessons we have learned to the generations that come after us? Y'all, how can we do that? We got to continue to tell them. To tell them, yeah, that's it. How, how are they going to know we don't tell if we don't tell them? We got to tell them. You know, you got those that just because the children right now have all the different provisions and opportunities that they have going for them right now. So some of them don't appreciate what they have because they don't know the struggle of those before them, the sacrifices of those before them in order for them to be able to experience and to have the things that they have right now. Mm -hmm. So therefore, how can we do this? The, 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 uh, the title says, lest we forget. So therefore, we got to tell them. We got to share the word. That's why it's a good thing, y'all, to sit back and listen to wisdom speaking. Mm -hmm. And you soak up that, how you say, turn into a sponge. Mm -hmm. Soak up that, that knowledge that's being laid on you because one thing about it is you can do recall and share it with someone else because they say each one teach one. So therefore, how can you teach them if you don't listen to someone that know so that you can share it with someone else later on? Anybody want to say anything on that background before we go further into this Sunday school lesson, y'all? Lest we forget. You know, one thing about it, when you forget, you can mess yourself up. Because when you say, lest we forget, that means that you've been told. Mm -hmm. If I'm telling you not to forget, that means that I had already told you. So I'm going to remind you again, because guess what? I don't want you to forget. The other glances we're going to do today are a promise kept, a memory of provision, a place of plenty. A promise kept. Moses is relaying the responsibilities of the covenant the Lord made with the children of Israel on Mount Horeb before they enter into the promised land. The Lord told the children of Israel that they were to keep his commandments, 
including the Ten Commandments and many others found in Exodus and repeated in Deuteronomy. If the Israelites keep the commandments, then they will multiply and prosper in the promised land as a result of God's glorious presence. I want to stop right there. Now listen to what they just said, y'all. Now, if you want to prosper in the promised land, all you have to do, it says, if the Israelites keep the commandments, then they will multiply and prosper in the promised land as a result of God's glorious presence. So all you got to do is be obedient. And if you are obedient, you will prosper. That don't sound too hard, y'all. That don't be obedient. Now the one thing about it, like I said before, it's one thing if you didn't know. But I'm telling you, and this isn't the first time I've told you, but what I'm doing is I'm reminding you of what I've already told you. Moses also notes that God is keeping his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob about delivering the people into the promised land and allowing them to multiply and prosper there. But as a result of God's sovereign knowledge and the Israelites' disobedience, when they received the covenant, the Lord tested them in the wilderness. They were shown the power and provision of God as well as the result of their disobedience for 40 years as they wandered. Now, y'all think about that. I, 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 I'm, I'm kind of at a loss of words because I don't, I don't understand how. First of all, he delivered you out of the hands of Pharaoh. He guided you by day with the cloud. He guided you by night with the, with the, uh, the, the pillar of fire. He continued to protect you. He, you thought you were at a dead end when you had the army behind you in the Red Sea before you. He parted the Red Sea. You walked across on dry land. He got rid of those that were chasing you. He continued to provide for you. You didn't miss a meal. But yet, even in all that he shows you, you still want to be disobedient. He's shown you that he's a, a God of, uh, that keeps his promises. He's a God of his word. I'm telling you this, and what I tell you, I do. So it's not one of those things like we got people that will tell you they'll do something, and they'll even say, I promise. But they don't do it. But if you look at this, he said, Moses, notes also, Moses also notes that God is keeping his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob by delivering the people into the promised land. So he's keep, he's, he said what he was going to do, and he's doing what he said that he would do. Now the question says, how do you think it is important that Moses reminds the Israelites about the promises God made to them and their ancestors? Y'all, I put, how quickly we forget. And that's the one thing about it. You know, people can do things for you, but it's amazing how quickly you forget what someone has done for you. Like it said, lest we forget. Don't want you to forget because of the fact that there is history behind this. That if you were, there's a story to tell. I want to share this story with you because of the fact that it affects you. Because of the fact it was your family members that caused y'all to be in this wandering, in this circling mode. We just, if you will, we just hovering. Promised land right there, but we just hovering. Because we didn't do right. So until all those that were disobedient are gone, we're not going. So therefore, Moses got to tell them. Anybody want to say anything on the promise cap before we go into a memory of provision? All right, a memory of provision. Moses shares two examples of how the Lord miraculously provided for the children of Israel during their time in the wilderness. The Lord supplied manna, 
when they were hungry and preserved their clothes and their shoes for decades. I'm going to stop right there. I was about to say something about that, but I didn't want to get ahead of you because he provided miracles all along the way. But those ones, I don't know how they could just forget that food falling from the sky exactly. for you. Exactly. And your yeah, good food, sweet. Uh, that they walk, ain't never had before. You're walking around in the desert for 40 years and your clothes and shoes don't get old. They stay intact. And you think about that, 40 years. Some of our stuff don't last. Think about it. How many times have you bought a pair of shoes and you wore them two times and they tore up? Y'all can all think about, uh, 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 or you, you had a shirt, you wore it twice and now it's got a rip in it. 40 years, your clothes didn't wear out. You didn't wear a hole in your shoes. And they out there in the desert. In the you. desert. And you didn't starve. You getting provided for. But yet, you still want to complain. They talk about that song. Now that song is saying, you see a man complaining with a loaf of bread under his arm. Because it ain't what he want. Mm -hmm. So he going to complain. But you got a meal. Here you are. When Moses is reminding them of how the Lord has took care, how he brought your parents out of, I'm using my word, slavery, mm -hmm. and now you over here in this promised land, and everything you want is right here for you. Mm -hmm. He said, but don't forget how the Lord brought you. Mm -hmm. And he goes on like what you and Michelle was talking about, telling them about, you know, you was out there in the wilderness, front, wandering around. Now, he's talking to this. This is a different generation. Let me put that clear mm -hmm, right now. Mm -hmm. He's talking to this generation when he said, you out in the wilderness 40 years. Mm -hmm. And said so your clothes didn't get old. Shoes didn't wear out. You never was hungry. Mm -hmm. And the Lord fed your manna mm -hmm, from heaven. Mm -hmm. And now you're going into the land that he has promised your father that would be his. He said, but now when you get over there, don't forget that the Lord brought you. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of us special black peoples, we come a long ways, but we still got a long ways to go. Mm -hmm. And when I said we come a long way, I be talking about, you know, when I was a boy coming up and the way the Lord brought me, I never would have thought that I would be sitting in here talking about how the Lord brought me, got a suit of clothes on. Mm -hmm. And when I was coming up through them time, clothes I was wearing had patches on. Mm -hmm. Houses I was living in, you could look up and see through the ceiling. Mm -hmm. But the Lord brought. Mm -hmm. And I said this a lot of times. He said, don't forget. Lest we forget. Don't forget. You know, and when I say about how we lived in them old houses, and when I tell you about the water was freezing the water bucket, see, mm -hmm. when I was, I never did tell y'all why the water was in the water bucket, but we had to go down to a well out there. We had to walk just about a mile to get our water and bring mm. it back. And uh, had a water bucket and a dip in it. And in the winter time, he'd be sitting up in there, and especially at night. He would get so cold in that house, children, that that water would freeze in that water bucket where we brought that water in. And you could take the dipper by the dipper handle and pick that bucket up if it froze so hard in there. And we living in them mm -hmm. houses. And y'all never froze and to death. And we day. didn't freeze. Mm -hmm. None of us mm -hmm. freeze. Mm -hmm. And I can't help but to think about it. It wasn't nothing but the Lord. Mm -hmm. And you know, the other day when I was in Bible study, I'm going to stop after this, <laughs> y'all. Because I get carried away when I get to looking back. And when I was in Bible study, I never thought about it this way, but the young man that was teaching us, y'all know him, I can't call his name, but he come with Trinae Jordan and he got a church somewhere. And uh, he was saying, say, you know, say, if you can explain it, say, the Lord didn't do it. And I was just, I got to thinking about that. And cause he talked about that after, you know, I done told, said like this in here. He said, now if you can't explain it, say, the Lord didn't do it. 
He said, now you said y'all was in them houses like that. You can't explain why y'all in free to death. He said, the Lord did it. <laughs> Amen, Dad. Lord have mercy. Amen. Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I, I get carried away when I look back, mm -hmm. y'all. He said, the Lord did it. Amen. Yeah. And you know the Lord is just so good. Yes. And so, sometimes... I get to looking back. I ain't been always like the Lord wanted me to be. But I look back and I say, Lord, I sure do thank you for keep on keeping mm -hmm. me. And, and then he let me know in his word about how he would let you see your children. Children, mm -hmm. children. And their children. I say, Lord, I sure do thank mm -hmm. you. And then I get to think about when he said, when David was talking, I said, I once was young. Lord have mercy. But now I'm old. Mm -hmm. But I never seen the righteous of God forsaken, neither begging for bread. Mm -hmm. Lord, I just can't help but to thank Amen, you. Amen, Daddy. Yeah, you've been good. Mm -hmm. I know I done got away from where no, you go. No, you right on there. Because the thing about it, we're talking about lest you forget. You, you're not forgetting. You're not forgetting. And what you just showed, you just showed the aim for change. You understood, you appreciate, and you practice because of the fact that you ain't always been where you are. You came from somewhere, mm -hmm. and you didn't forget where you came from, and you telling others so that they won't forget where they've come from. Just because it, it may be better for us, we still had to come through some stuff that we have to share with our children and let them know it wasn't always like this. It's just like, y'all, I remember Marissa had to do this, this um, homework assignment. And it made us actual, lest we forget. And it was talking about the comparison of what the children today have versus what used to be. It said black and white TV. It said um, cable. And we were talking about the fact that when we were, and, and Marissa was like, what a black and white TV was. Huh? I said, I bet she didn't know what a black and white TV she was. She didn't. And then we told her, you know, back then we had three channels, three, nine, and 12. And the TV went off at a certain time, because, uh, and then all you had was the snow. She don't know anything about a TV signing off. She don't know about, remember y'all, the commercial say, it's 11 o'clock. Do you know where your children are? She didn't know anything about that. So, and then when they talked about an outhouse versus a bathroom, uh, a well versus running water, she didn't know anything about any of that. So here we are, we talking to her, and as we going down through that list, Kenneth and I realized that we, we, did, we experienced, we didn't have a remote control. We had to get up and turn the TV ourselves. And those are those things. Yeah. You know, that was many times we get, come here, be in the other room. Come in here, turn the TV. <laughs> we remember them days. But see, they don't know anything about that, lest we forget. It hadn't always been this way. Y'all think about it. When you think about the cars, the cars have come a long way. And, and then we talk about walking, riding them bikes. We did all of that. So lest we forget, you got to remember where you come from and how he's blessed you so that these children will recognize that they need to have a sense of appreciation. Wow. Even the time, you can say, I remember when children used to play outdoors. Okay. We had all kind of outdoor games, didn't we? And we, okay, okay we're going to red light, green light. I remember when we used to play board games. Oh, we, oh yeah. You know what? Let me tell you, see. Let, let me tell you something. Now, you're going to take it back. You know, when we'd have, like, spring break and all that stuff, at the house, we used to have tournaments. Because we're going to stay up all night. We had a tomp tournament, knuckles tournament. Oh, oh, spades. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jack. Oh, we did jacks. So, so when you think, and you know, probably some of them don't even know what a jack is. And don't, Lord, don't even start talking about a bolo. A bolo? What's a bolo? Exactly. So, oh, you see, I never could hula hoop. But the thing about it is, is that those are those things that we, lest we forget, those are those childhood memories 
of letting us know. Because now, you know, it does my heart good when I'm driving and I see children outside playing. Because, you know, back in the day, that's all you saw was children outside playing. Because, you know, we lived on Kilmer Street. That field across the street used to be full of kids. We go from football to baseball. Mm -hmm. you, so when you think about that, lest we forget, you need to bring that back up. Amen. See, we, we're going down memory lane, y'all. That This was done not only to test their character, but to show the character of God. God is a provider, but also a parent to them. God would not leave them, but he does want them to demonstrate obedience and faithfulness to him. I'm going to start right there. Notice he said that he is a provider and a parent. Now, y'all think about that. When we think about our parents, mm -hmm. they were a provider uh -huh. and a parent. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, he, and, and the thing about it is, he is, uh, God will not leave them, but he does want them to demonstrate obedience and faithfulness to him. It made me think about, when we talk about obedience, y'all remember, Mel and Michelle, when we was told, when you can't abide by the rules of this house, it's time for you to, no time for you to amen. Because as long as you under this roof, we're gonna follow these rules. Amen. <laughs> amen. We remember, lest we forget. So we knew if they fear God, meaning they respect Him, they will obey Him. If they do not obey the Lord, they will face discipline through trials that are ultimately for their good and will develop them into the people of God they are called to be. So if you don't do what you're supposed to do, there are consequences for your disobedience. So therefore, here is your teachable moment because of the fact that you have been told. However, I got to remind you again, lest we forget. The question says, how is God like a parent in our lives? How is God different from an earthly parent? Daddy, come on. You raise up like you're ready to say something. Yeah. <laughs> you know, now this is Moses talking to these children, but then, you know, Joshua had a talk with the children, too. When just before he got ready to leave off the scene, they done come through Jordan. And Joshua got over on that side there and he started talking to him. Had them all sitting out there, wanting to let them know how good God had been to him. He said, and I want you to remember that how Jordan was out of bank. And when the Lord gave the order for the priest, how the priest walked, y'all let me tell you something. <laughs> Lord help me. <laughs> See, Jordan was out of bank, y'all. The water was way up. And they didn't know how they was going to cross over Jordan. But God told them, Jeremiah said, now I tell you, he said, you line them up, told them how to line them up, how to put the priests and the singers and all of them, put them in the front. And then said, and I want you to have them to blow the trumpet. When they started walking, Jordan, now they don't know how they're going to get through there, all that water, but he told them to go and cross it. And when Josh gave the order for them to move, they started walking, y'all. And when they got down to the bank where the water was spread out there, God would just mm -hmm. open it up. Open it up, y'all. And they were going on over on dry land. You're talking about a good God. Mm -hmm. And this is, why, this is why he letting them know. This is why the, this lesson Moses telling them about, letting them know how good God had been. And he was telling them, but like I said, I be talking, and I get to thinking about how good God has been to us, mm -hmm. and especially mm -hmm. to me. And when I see some of these shows and things to show how the black people's out there in the cotton field, picking cotton, mm -hmm. I've been through that, y'all. And how they had a sign up saying white and colored. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they were all, yeah. And this is what he letting us know, y'all. See, like a lot of 
a lot of people mm -hmm. done forgot about how God mm -hmm. brought us. And I'm going to cut this because I'm going to get into what I want to say about this right here. <laughs> we were walking to Levy and Geraldine, what did they let? Anyway, I can't think of the last name. If I could think of the last name, y'all probably would know him. Uh, and they, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I said this to them, you know, because we were walking the levee, and they was giving Al Sharpen and Jesse Jackson down the road talking about them. And so she works at the Memorial Hospital as some kind of something other than the nursing part. And I s told them, I said, now, y'all talking about Al Sharpen and Jesse Jackson talking about y'all to go somewhere and sit down. I said, but do you know one thing? I said, that job that you got up there at Memorial Hospital, I said, do you know why Al Sharpen and Jesse Jackson have called you working in these places mm -hmm. like this? I said, but a lot of people, mm -hmm. especially black mm -hmm. people, they don't realize mm -hmm. this thing mm -hmm. that Jackson and Al Sharpen went through for black people mm -hmm. to get what, it, what we are today. Lest we forget. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And, and they stopped talking then, and he never would say nothing mm -hmm. else about Al Sharpen and Jesse mm -hmm. Jackson around me. Mm -hmm. Because I knew that it was them that called us black people to move on up mm -hmm. a little higher. But you know the same thing with Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of black people mm -hmm. dog them. Mm -hmm. They need to get somewhere and sit down, making it harder for us. Really, you should have joined in the fight. Mm -hmm. You should have joined in the fight. Uh, and that's the same as saying, you stand for, for something or you stand for nothing mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. And so many times, I don't know why it's so easy for us to get brainwashed and mm -hmm. forget. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We forget. You know, and, and the thing about it, Mary, what you were saying, it made me think about with, with both what you and Daddy both said, Think about looking at some of these basketball teams and football teams, you know, they used to be all white basketball teams. And, but yet now, when you look at these basketball teams and these football teams, you think about the struggle that Jackie Robinson went through in order to break that barrier. Come on, Michelle. I want to say something about that. Being a sports fan, man, as a young boy, they had so few blacks on the team that like in Ebony and Jet, they used to have pictures of the black, they had each team and then they had a, lit, a picture of the black players on each team. Mm -hmm. That's how few it was. You could have every team in the NFL and mm -hmm. the NBA. Mm -hmm. Ebony used to like have every team up there. Then they didn't have a picture of the name of each black player. Because they were few and far between. That, it was so few that they could do that. Lest we forget. And Uh, when we look back and see how God has brought us mm -hmm. and he's still bringing Bring us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we're standing not only God has brought us and still carrying mm -hmm. us but we're standing on the shoulders of so many that have fought the fight for it, us lest we forget yet, mm -hmm. yet young people today mm, come on <laughs> young people today I don't know if it's I, I can't understand. It's like, well, that's old. That don't apply to me. That, mm -hmm. What does apply to you mm -hmm. when it comes to decency mm -hmm. and morals? Mm -hmm. Just having a moral compass, mm -hmm. period. It, it, it's lost. Mm -hmm. No respect. And I, working in Walmart, there's so many young people coming there with children and they so loaded down with weed, it reeks off their clothes. Mm. And that child has rolled in that car. Mm. And all you smell is the weed. Mm. You, you don't care what you're doing to that child. Mm -hmm. Don't care at all. And if you say something to them, that's trouble. Mm -hmm. Now I just go look at the car tag. <laughs> I ain't got to say nothing to you. I just go look what car you get in and look at the car tag and tell them to take, do a wellness check or a home visit Ooh. because I'm worried about the wellness of that child. Mm -hmm. You don't have to fuss with people mm -hmm. nowadays, but it's just that we, we've forgotten. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've forgotten. 
And you know, you're supposed to tell, each generation is supposed to tell yes. the next generation. Yes. Somewhere nobody's telling mm -hmm. of the goodness of mm -hmm. the Lord and how he's brought us mm -hmm. and how he's still keeping us. Mm -hmm. And if nothing else, we owe God mm -hmm. the thanks and the gratitude and just hum being humble Amen. enough to respect, show Amen. that respect. We can see it around here. Mm -hmm. They stand on the porch, smoke weed, bump and bump that mm -hmm. radio. Don't care about church. Mm -mm. And you, and you know when you said no that respect you, or reverence for the church ground. You remember? Now, now, let, let's let's take it back, lest we forget. Growing up, y'all remember the ones that used to smoke? Mm -hmm. They used to go across the street under that tree to smoke a cigarette. They wouldn't smoke on church ground. And then you had those that if they had their music loud when they turned onto the street, mm -hmm. they would turn it down. Yes, yes, lest we forget. You ain't got to stay quiet, Daddy. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was talking about remember. See, this, like I said, Joshua, when he got them ready, and they went on cross Jordan there, and then he made a monument out there where they would know, let them know that it was the Lord mm -hmm. that brought them through. And while he was talking to them out there, you know, he wanted to know who was going to serve the Lord after everybody had got over there. And, uh, Everybody was talking about they was going to serve the Lord. So he set up a rock under a tree over there. He said, now, this going to be a witness against you that you said you would serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. Then he told him, said, but for me and my house, house we're going to serve, serve the Lord. Lord. Amen. That's after it doesn't come through. That's when he said, you know, lest we forget. So a lot of people, that's why he told this rock going to be a witness against you. Now, now you know that. You just said something with that too, y'all. Y'all remember growing up, he would tell us, we going to church? Oh yeah, for, for this house, we, are, you gonna serve, are you going to church? You going to church? <laughs> they going to church too. <laughs> they didn't play that. Exactly, yes. Yeah, because I know, I know the couple of times I did bring uh, some of my college friends home. I said, now, I'm going to tell you right now, you better put a dress in that bag because we go to church in this house. Ain't no exceptions. You going to church. So that's one of those things, lest we forget. Amen. Amen. A place of plenty. Moses closes this portion of his address by describing the greatness of the promised land. The land God is giving the children of Israel is plentiful. For the people of Israel who are living in a world of farmers, shepherds, and traders, this land will be paradise. The soil is fertile. There is natural fruit. There are abundant water sources. And there is minimal, mineral wealth for building and trading. God is giving this tiny, soon-to-be nation all the resources it needs to flourish. I'm going to start right there. Notice what it said. God is giving. You don't have to go and uh, purchase anything. You don't have to go and get approved for a mortgage so that you can get you some property. You don't have to do any of those things. It is being given to you. You haven't done anything to deserve it, but God is blessing you. And then the description that he says, paradise. You going into this promised land of paradise because everything you need is going to be provided for you. You don't have to do anything to receive it. Well, yes, you do. You got to be obedient. That's why I am reminding you once again, lest we forget, as to what it is that is required of you. You are receiving all of this, but there is a requirement that goes along with it. Make me think about what that, that cliche said, nothing in life is free. Mm -hmm. Now, you're getting all of these provisions but there is one thing that is required of you, obedience. That's it, obedience. But for some people, ooh, it's real hard, Mel. 
You want me to be obedient? Dog. Yes. You want the promise. You want to be a partaker of this promised land and the provisions that are here for you. Yes. Obedience is the requirement. Lest we forget. Moses warns that the response to this abundance should be humility and thanksgiving. I'll stop right there. Some people don't know how to be humble. There are some people have that entitlement mentality and think that it's just supposed to be that way because of who I am. You are just supposed to just do it. No. Wrong answer. Humbleness of heart goes a long way. Humility goes a long way. Don't mean that you're weak. No, come on, Mary. I saw it. You know, that just brought something to my mind. I can tell you. <laughs> Have you heard uh, people say, I can't work for nobody. I don't want nobody telling me what to do. Ooh. But you want a check. You want a paycheck? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. You want what the Joneses have? Ooh, come on, come on, come on. You mm -hmm. want to live life. Well, baby, you don't want to eat. Mm -mm. But yet, when you look back, didn't somebody have to suffer and do things for you? Mm -hmm. didn't, didn't Christ Amen. suffer for you? Amen. Hasn't God Amen. given his son for you? For you. <laughs> Yes, he has. So God, God has been good, yet you can't do a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Lest a we forget. Bit. Lest we a forget. A little bit. Lest we forget. That just brought this out to me. We, we have become, a, especially with, the, with this last election and everything that came out, mm -hmm. we have become a society that is a, a society of entitlement. You, you know what, Mary? You, you expect a lot. For nothing. Exactly. You for made doing me, nothing. You, you, when you said that about I don't want to work with nobody, it made me think about uh, when I was trying to help a student with a part-time job while she was in school. She said to me, um, I don't want to work on the weekends. I want a part-time job with benefits, and I need to make at least 15 an hour. You don't want a part-time job because you are telling all that what you don't want and what you expect while you're trying to go to school. You need to be trying to be a humbled of heart and be thankful that you've got an employer that wants to work with your school schedule. I don't remember if she had children, man. And that was the thing. I said, and, and I even said, well, are you willing to work at least one weekend? I need my weekends off. Well, all right then. Exactly. And, and, and the thing about it is you'd be amazed at how many people miss out on great opportunities because they, they have this entitlement mentality as to what they want, how they want it, when they want it, where they want it. And if you can't do that, then I can't do it. But you still need to pay your bills. How are you going to pay your bills? And that's the one thing about it. You've got somebody providing for you but now you want to put stipulations on the provisions that's being provided for you. You haven't done anything to deserve it, but yet you are receiving it. And the only requirement you have is obedience. Follow the rules. Follow the law. It's just like when you get a job. It's the same thing, y'all. Y'all got policies and procedures and regulations that you have to follow if you want to keep your job. And if you don't follow these guidelines, guess what? Somebody's always going to tell you what to do no matter what the situation is. Mm -hmm. you, you, can be a, you can own your own business. You still got to answer to somebody. You got to Amen. answer to the IRS for paying your taxes. Amen. Or you can be like, like daddy retired and ain't got no job, but he still has to answer to you about, uh, <laughs> <laughs> about his meals and taking his medicine. <laughs> you right. <laughs> yeah. 
Mm-hmm. 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 Amen. Okay. <laughs> Amen. So there are guidelines in place for regulations, decrees, however you want to title it, but there are those things that are in place for all of us to acknowledge and to be obedient in following. Consequences. Well, the same uh -huh. Amen. The same Amen. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But you're not. But you're not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What you say? What you say? There are consequences mm -hmm. for our actions. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it is, that's why Moses is having this conversation with them and continuing to remind them. Because y'all think about it. Moses is at a place of, y'all, I messed up. So the only thing I can do is tell you about it mm -hmm. to prepare you. Because if look at me. Because of what I did, God has told me, I'm going to let you see it, but you will not enter. So therefore, in an effort so that you won't have to go to think about it, y'all. Think about this, y'all. Moses gets to lead them to the promised land. Moses watches the 40 years of wandering and those generations being uh, dying off and the new generations are, being, uh, are, are coming along. Moses is telling them because of the fact that I'm telling you because of what I have witnessed and what I have experienced. So therefore, I don't want you to forget because like I told y'all, I messed up. And because of what I did, God has already told me I can't enter the promised land. However, because you were obedient and you did what I told you to do and you led them out and you did all that I told you and you told them what I told you to tell them, I'm going to let you see it. But you can't go in. When he, when he did what he did. See, fool with hard head folk. <laughs> 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 I'm going to say something about Abraham and Moses, and then I'm going to say something about me. You know, when God got ready to, for Abraham to have something, he told Abraham to look to the north, look to the east, and to the west, south, all of He said, just the fudge your eyes can hold up, said, I'm going to give that to you, your seed. Mm -hmm. And your seed shall have a land as long as they obey God. And now Moses has been leading them all of this time, y'all. But then God called Moses to the mountain. <laughs> Wanted to show him something. Mm -hmm. He told Moses to look to the north, look to the east. Look to the west and look to the south. He said, all of that land, that promised land over there, see, all of that, he said, but you ain't going to go into mm -hmm. it. So you ain't going to go mm -hmm. into it. And according to God's word, Moses didn't make it. Nope. He died up on that mountain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when he died, according to the Bible, nobody know why God buried him at. Mm -hmm. All they know, he went up and didn't come back. Mm -hmm. And while he was gone, Joshua Ray was with Moses, y'all, mm -hmm. going along. God mm -hmm. already got somebody. And after Moses been gone up there on that mountain so long, they sitting around there waiting and mourning, waiting for Moses to come back while they could move and go across this Jordan, y'all, mm -hmm. we talking about. Mm -hmm. And so while they were there moaning, God spoke to Joshua and told Joshua, he said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Mm -hmm. He said, now you get up mm -hmm. and carry these people over Jordan. Amen. He let him moan for a while, but mm -hmm. then he let him know, now Moses is dead. Mm -hmm. I'm using my word. Mm -hmm. He ain't coming back. Mm -hmm. So you're going to leave him now. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I'm through, Michelle. Amen. So now you, it's time for you. Now I'm getting ready to give you your instructions to, to lead my people into the promised land. Amen, Daddy. Like, like you're going to stand here and watch all of them go, even though you don't get to go. Mm-hmm. 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 Grace. Mm-hmm. 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 Amen. Amen. But it also lets you know, like you said, there were consequences. And, and the one thing about it is, is that that's why the humility, and that's why lest we forget, Moses knew what he had done. And God had told Moses, now, you won't get to go in, but I'll let you see it. You know, I said I was going <laughs> to about me, what I was going to say. <laughs> you know, the Lord has kept me around here a long time, y'all. And I ain't always live for the Lord like I should live. And I know that now. And that's why I tell anybody when they talk about you're going to have to give an account of what you do. A lot of people think you're going to have to die to give an account of it. Mm -hmm. You're going to give an account of it while you're living. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I'm talking about what I know from experience. I sat back. Mm -hmm. I sat back we and forget. I looked what I did. A lot of stuff I did. And I said, Lord, forgive me. Because I didn't know, I didn't have no idea what I was doing, and I shouldn't have been doing. Well, I, I take put it back this way. I know, because if I hadn't known, I wouldn't have been had. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the Lord let me come through all of that where I can look back and see mm -hmm. where I come from mm -hmm. and what I did. And the Lord is just so good Yes, to me. he is. I can't help but to say thank you. Amen, amen. Yeah. You, you know, Daddy, when you said that, you made me think about how we have been, we've been told that we need to repent daily. And there's a reason for that repentance, because of the fact that we may have said the wrong thing, thought the wrong thing, mm -hmm. did the wrong thing. And all we got to do, we ain't got to repent in front of nobody. It's between me and Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I go to him and, and, and outline, Lord, this is what I did, and I need to repent. And I ask that you forgive me. Come on, Mary. Exactly. Lest we forget. And that's your moment to say, Lord, I'm sorry. I repent. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes, amen, amen. If the Israelites inherit all of these blessings and forget the Lord who gave it to them, they will face judgment. If they do not keep the commands, laws, decrees, and regulations of the Lord, they will not prosper as they are supposed to in the place of God's promise. Everything being provided for them, y'all. The question says... How are the responsibilities the Lord gives the Israelites as they move from slavery to freedom similar to the responsibilities of a Christian moving from sin to freedom? Now, y'all think about that. One of the things, y'all, that I keep saying when it comes to these lessons, these are self-check lessons, self-examinating lessons for you to, if you will, look back over your own life, situations, experiences, and find, and, 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 and even if you need to, you may need to ask, Lord, Lord, show me so that I can recognize, acknowledge what it is that I need to see so that I can, lest I forget, I can repent of what I did, that I may get in step with following the commands, laws, rules, decrees, guidelines, policies, procedures, however you want to entitle it, lest I forget 
that I may be, if you will, obedient. And that's the bottom line, obedience. God is blessing them with the promised land. He's laying it out there. Everything you could think that you need, I am providing for you. You didn't have to work for it. You didn't have to apply and get approved. All you have to do, trust, believe, obey, and pray. That's all you got to do. That's it. That's it. Anybody want to say anything on this lesson before we go on to liberate lesson? This was a good lesson today. Lest we forget. Amen. Liberating lesson. That's it. It's right there for you. Promised land. Your paradise. Everything right there. Nationalism is on the rise all across the world as various leaders use the idea of their, na their nation as the greatest nation to maintain power and polarize politics. There is increased pressure to fully support the government in all its actions or be labeled as unpatriotic or even a traitor. But this is not the way of Christ. No nation is perfect and no nation should think it is above criticism. No person or group of people prospered because of their own work alone. It is the provision of God, the work of generations, and particular cir circumstances that allow for time, times of prosperity. Today, we are more interconnected than ever. Every nation's policies and e economy affect another. Events that are significant in one nation often impact a dozen others. We are called by God to be humble as believers, even as we recognize God's call, uh, as we recognize God calls us for promise. Israel was reminded before they entered the promised land to be humble as a nation. God has delivered them. They had not delivered themselves. It was only by their humility and obedience to God's command that they would prosper in the land. As believers, we must remind ourselves to be humble, keep our leaders accountable, and resist the pride of nationalism. How have you seen pride in a particular group become destructive? How can you avoid that same pride in groups that you belong to, whether church, ethnicity, government, or organization. Y'all, you know what I thought about. You know, and it's funny she said that because that question right here that says, how have you seen pride in a particular group become destructive? I thought about that insurrection because that was a prime example of destructive right there. You didn't get your way, so now you want to be destructive. Yes. Uh, as well as the Ukrainian yes. Situation. Yes. 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 That, that's taunting and bullying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and to me, it's kind of bullying the other nation. I dare you to get it wrong. Mm-hmm. I got my news about mm -hmm. it. I dare you. Mm-hmm. I'm grateful. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like, you're not, you're not using your good seat. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Lest you forget. Amen. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Okay, have yes, they do. Uh huh. And I'm just looking at how Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes. 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 But lest we forget. Amen. to the gin, you know, 
And them old men were sitting around there talking, you know. Television hadn't come out, y'all. See, I remember when there wasn't no television. And they was talking to them about, yeah, man, say, it's going to be, I never has forgot this. Say, you're going to be able to sit in your house and see what's going on all over the world. And some guy talked, talk, talk, talk. Say, man, you know you ain't going to be able to sit in your house and see what's going on all over the world. And that was before TV come out, y'all. They was talking about TV, but I didn't know what they were talking about, but I still hadn't forgot that. And I remember I was a boy, and we was at that gym down there, and they was telling about that. So I remember when it wasn't no TV. And then I remember when the TV did finally come out. Do y'all know some of the people that when they would see a TV, they would trying to hide because they thought the people on the TV could see them. <laughs> They did. They really did. They thought the people on TV could see them. And some of them would take something and put over that TV when it was on <laughs> while the people couldn't see them. <laughs> so we come along. Mm, yes, we have. Lest we forget. Lest we forget. Do you remember when the TVs came out? Now, y'all were old enough. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Because you had a color TV? No, it was color. Oh, 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 oh. Color functional TV. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that. And we used to come run. And they would get, everybody would try to get that seat. Uh, I can tell you what it used to be. Uh, I can remember Sunday evening, and, and, and I hear my aunts down at my grandma's house, and they say, there's some color people on Ed Sullivan. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. That's how you see it. Yeah. You right, you right, yeah. Ooh. Lest we forget. Yeah. Amen. Application for activation. We all need reminders of how far we have come in order to keep us from becoming prideful. Without them, it is easy to believe that all of our success is because of how great we are. There is no one who has lived that is entirely self-made. Success should not only be measured in material things and positions, indeed, even the great kings in scripture, Solomon and David were successes in some ways and failures in others, especially with their families. But God is able to deliver us as God delivered them. We must have people in our lives to keep us accountable and also to remind ourselves of how God and others contributed to our success. We didn't do it by ourselves, y'all. How do you keep yourself humble? This week, take an opportunity to journal about your testimonies that keep you humble. It can be times you recognize you only made it by God's power, memories of lessons you've learned from past mistakes, or thinking about the people who paved the way for you to be where you are. Whatever reminds you to be humble, thank God for it and also for his promise to be with you as you seek to do his will. Not your will, but his will. Good lesson this morning as we bring this to a close. Want to leave you with this. The Ten Commandments are not multiple choice. <laughs>